The Roses. This story takes place in New York City in the year 1912. Read all about it. Read all about it. The distant shouts of the newspaper seller carried up into the apartment above, where Howard Colby Ives sat. Howard fidgeted his feet impatiently. He adjusted his tie and looked up at the clock on the wall. Twenty minutes past three. Howard let out a long sigh. It's been twenty minutes since the interview started. Thought Howard wearily, "When is the interviewer going to give Abdul Baha a chance to speak?" Howard, together with a few other guests, had come to an interview that was taking place with Abdul Baha. The interviewer, a gentleman with round glasses, was writing an article about Abdul Baha and had asked to meet with him. But since the start of the interview, only the interviewer had spoken. His questions were long, one after the other, without pause, and he didn't give Abdul Baha any opportunity to answer. Restless, Howard looked around the room. The man to his right kept tapping his pen on his knee. The woman to his left kept opening and closing her fan. Howard looked up at the clock again. Twenty-six minutes past three. The interviewer was still talking. Howard's eyes strayed towards the door. He noticed the enormous bunch of pink roses that had been given to Abdul Baha as a gift that morning. The bunch of roses was so large and the stem so long, no vase big enough had been found to put them in. What did they put the roses in? Howard wondered. He leaned sideways and chuckled softly at what he saw. Someone had placed the roses in the umbrella stand. How creative! He thought. The voice of the interviewer pulled his attention back into the room. The interviewer was still talking. Someone must stop the interview. Howard thought impatiently. He looked around the room to see who might put an end to this uncomfortable situation. Suddenly, he had a thought. Perhaps Abdul Baha will just end the interview himself. Howard looked to Abdul Baha. To Howard's surprise, however, Abdul Baha sat perfectly relaxed. His brilliant blue eyes shone brightly, and his face was radiant. He did not seem impatient or upset. In fact, he seemed to be listening with great interest to every word that the interviewer had to say. Abdul Baha's expression seemed to show infinite love, patience, and understanding. Finally, the interviewer paused. Howard held his breath as silence filled the room. Then, ever so gently. The silence was broken by the soft voice of Abdul Baha. The humility and majesty in Abdul Baha's every word and expression captivated Howard's heart. Howard looked at the interviewer, and was surprised by what he saw. Something within the gentleman had changed. He was now listening eagerly to Abdul Baha, and his face was luminous. His whole being seemed to show humility. Could it be that all this time, Abdul Baha had been listening patiently, letting the interviewer empty his heart and mind, the same way that? It is impossible to pour water into a cup that is already full. Perhaps Abdul Baha was waiting for the interviewer to empty himself of all his questions and ideas, so that he could receive Abdul Baha's words and love. 
how different the conversation might have been had anyone interrupted the interviewer before he was ready to listen. Abdul Baha finished the interview and arose from his chair. All those gathered stood to their feet. Abdul Baha warmly embraced the interviewer and walked with him towards the front door. Suddenly, Abdul Baha paused. Seeing the enormous bunch of roses in the umbrella stand, he let out a joyful laugh, filling the room with laughter and delight. He then gathered the magnificent bunch of roses in his arms and placed them in the arms of the interviewer. Surprised, the interviewer beamed with happiness. He looked so radiant, so humble, and so transformed. Howard's face broke into a wide smile. He knew that he would never forget this experience. He had learned from Abdul Baha what it means to truly listen. Thank you.